Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This time we're discussing the Beretta Model 1951, sometimes called the Brigadier. This is Beretta's first locked breech semi-automatic pistol and was built in the wake of World War II as a replacement for the M1934-380 and uh, was adopted in 1951 by the Italian Navy and the National Police and various other agencies. Curiously, the Army stuck with their Model 1934s right up until the Beretta Model 92, this pistol's direct successor, was introduced in the 1970s. The gun did not just see service in Italy, however. Um, a number of variants were made at the Egyptian Army's behest, which had a slightly longer barrel, more prominent sights, a simplified grip, and a heel magazine release. And they ordered about 50,000 of these, and they found them to be quite, quite good. They were very impressed, and they did good service. Now, in 1960 or so, uh, the Egyptian arms company Mahdi, M-A-A-D-I, uh, began producing them under license as the Hell One, which are essentially identical to the original pistol, they didn't adopt any of the changes that the Army had specified. Um, and they were produced under license for a number of years and remain in service in, in, in um, Egypt. And they were also produced under license in Iraq as the Tariq, and in Israel, Nigeria, and several other countries. And they attained a nearly legendary reputation for reliability in desert conditions, um, possibly because of the open top slide, which honestly I would have thought would be problematic in a sandy environment, but apparently it isn't. So this is, as mentioned, the immediate predecessor of the Model 92, and I don't doubt that you can see some resemblance there, and um, which curiously is also in some places known as the Brigadier. <laughs> It's guns. It's got to be confusing. Anyway, this has a number of interesting features. Let's take it to the tabletop and have a look. Okay, first things first, let's unload and show clear and adjust the camera slightly. To do this, you press the magazine release, which is located here, and you strip the magazine out. Um, it's pretty common in Europe to practice retaining the magazine. And very often in European service pistols of the day, magazines did not drop free. So it made a certain amount of sense to have the magazine release here because your hand had to be there anyway to strip the magazine. Pull back the slide, no cartridge in the hole, and we're good to go. Now, originally these guns were made with an alloy frame which turned out not to withstand the battering of full-powered military 9mm loads. So, um, in 1955, they switched to steel. Although they did, in the 70s, make a few more in alloy, undoubtedly with improved metallurgy, just before the Beretta Model 92 was introduced. So, this feature is unusual, but we've already discussed that. The safety is, in some ways, kind of bizarre. It's a cross-bolt safety. And it seems weird and counterintuitive at first, but honestly, it's pretty easy to take it off with the knuckle of your thumb. And I have facilitated that by relieving the grip here slightly so that essentially I can't get a good proper grip on the pistol without taking the safety off. And uh, the trigger pull is pretty nice, actually. It's not heavy. It's actually, it is kind of heavy. It's so crisp, though, that I don't really notice that. And it certainly doesn't affect accuracy. Reset is long mostly because of there's so much over travel but on a service pistol of its time it's actually a pretty good trigger 
the slide locks back on an empty magazine or it can be manually locked back with a lever here. Uh, the gun is not tiny by any means. It's eight inches long and about five inches high. And it weighs, I, if I, I don't quote me on this, I could be wrong. I believe I recall it weighing about 34 ounces. It's certainly a decent chunk in the hand, but it doesn't feel unusually heavy to me. Um, the slide can be operated with the safety engaged, which I think is an excellent feature. The sights are pretty minimal, and this is, I am told, to avoid snagging on the holster. But honestly, um, service pistols <laughs> are relatively seldom used, and when they are, it's generally speaking at very close range where the small sights aren't much of an issue. Now, to dismantle the gun, you can see the takedown lever here. You pull the slide to the rear until this gap is over the lever, and then you rotate it 90 degrees, and the slide simply comes right off the front. It has a full-length steel guide rod, which the recoil spring is not captured, and the locking mechanism if you press this stud forward, it releases the barrel and you can just pull it right out. Now, anyone familiar with the Walther P38 will be familiar with this locking system because it's basically identical to that of the Walther P38. However, unlike the Walther P38, this has the recoil spring mounted under the barrel instead of alongside the breech block which makes for a much more svelte pistol. Reassembly, of course, is just the opposite of, of disassembly. Just And really, not at all difficult. And then, of course, you just pull the slide on, rotate the lever back into the proper position, and there you go. So, not a complicated gun, which is good for a service pistol. They come standard with a black plastic grip, although commercial versions sold in America as the 9 M951 Brigadier um, were available with a rather nice wooden grip. And I wouldn't mind having some wooden grips for this. But as it is, this is just about as stock as it could be. It's a uh, very reliable gun, very soft shooting, very accurate, and as I say, it's really quite svelte. I mean, it's not at all bulky and has really good ergonomics, if you even counting for the bizarre safety and European heel magazine release. Anyway, good gun, had a long service life. These were surplused a few years ago, and a great many of them came into the country, of which this is probably one. And at the time, they can be had for, they can be had pretty cheap then. Now, typically, they're running three, four hundred bucks. And um, I think they're well worth that. It's a very high quality gun, it's a great shooter. It's ergonomic, it's flat, making it pretty easy to carry if you're willing to work around its peculiar manual of arms. The Brano model 1951 has a long, had a long and, if you count licensed copies, continuing service career as a military weapon. Um, the 951 Brigadier enjoyed modest popularity in the United States. But most people who know about them knew about them know about them from the Mac Bolin the Executioner novels, uh, where he carried a silenced one in addition to his 44 auto mag. And you could tell it's fiction because his auto mag worked perfectly, <laughs> which in real life was an exception rather than the rule. Um, its successor, the Model 92, and then the 
M8 are much better known nowadays, but these remain a good, solid, nice shooting, accurate, reliable gun. And um, I quite like it, and I shoot it relatively frequently. Less so, of course, in these days of expensive and or difficult to obtain ammo. But it is what it is. So, if you like the video, please, please hit like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. We're approaching 500 subscribers. And um, thinking when we hit a thousand, presupposing that ever happens, there will be some sort of prize. What sort? Well, I'll leave that to your imagination, but bear in mind that my day job is as a custom handmade knife maker. I'm not, I'm not saying, just something to mull over. <laughs> anyway, hit like, subscribe, all the usual stuff. If you like what you see here and want to support my efforts, feel free to click the link below in the description and consider supporting me on Patreon. It all helps. For the moment, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.